So for the first part of the morning, this is the notebook we'll be playing around with, and then we will move to another notebook in an hour or so, two hours and change, to look at um, this idea of helper functions that we, a few of us talked about pairwise yesterday, which is sort of like an API to help you do stuff in biomedical problems, and we'll go into some detail about what that means. But first, just to describe what this is, um, there is a challenge that was released in 2014 um, called the Clef Challenge, and they went for 300 or so patient notes. They went and labeled in super detail a space of relationships to diseases in clinical notes. So that would be, say, you know, a mention of a disease name, if it's negated, if it's a historical mention, if it's a hypothetical mention, I'll tease these out more in a second, where in the body this disease is occurring. And it's this very dense layered annotation, all plugging into disease, but can all be viewed as a relation extraction problem, which is what we're doing today. We're focusing on the idea that a disorder happens in some body location. Right? These are two um, entities, just as we talked about yesterday for terminology, that have pretty concrete or fairly concrete descriptions um, that we can glue onto. Uh, I think I talked with somebody about disorder as some fraught overloading. Is a disorder a symptom? Is disorder you know a disease? Um, we'll get into some more details there, but we, we broadly these categories make sense, right? So this task asks you to read a bunch of text and find if a particular disorder is linked to a particular anatomical location, right? So in this sentence, you have history of adenoid cystic carcinoma of the trachea. So you want to say, oh, is this disease or disorder located at this anatomical location? And in fact, you label true. What clues might you leverage to take advantage of this? Well, you might think, you know, history of, that's a pretty strong clue you're talking about some sort of disease. Um, you're in the indication header, which is usually tells you, you know, why you've gone to the hospital. Um, you could see that there's some sort of prepositional pattern occurring between these. These are all clues telling you strongly that um, this is truly connected. You could also think um, of something like this where we have no history of bleeding problems, uh, no liver problems, so these are disconnected concepts, right? You could say the same history of clue tells you you're you know, living in a disease, a disease is truly there, but you have something like a comma splitting up these concepts, you have a double negation, his no history of bleeding problems, no liver problems, that sounds to suggest two disconnected concepts, these are the general types of ideas um, that apply to this um, task. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yes. Yeah, so that's a very keen observation. So the one thing that is very different in this data set is we don't have a state of the art disorder anatomical tagger that we've used to pre-process everything for you. What we've done is it said. Lowest common denominator, we've taken this big ontology called the Unified Medical Language System. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's just a collection of curated lexicons and dictionaries and ontologies. And we've just blasted it over these notes to identify entities through string matching and then looked at every pairwise occurrence of anatomy and disorder. And what that means is you get a very noisy version of possible relationships. While in the PubMed, you have this sort of like you benefited from being pretty confident that your arguments, your entities participating in the relationship are truly entities. Here you have maybe, you know, there's less certainty. What I would suggest strongly, um, and this is, I don't know if someone mentioned this at point um, while talking about all the labeling function stuff, it's often to better to write your labeling functions ignoring these types of problems, right? Like if you were to write a labeling function that says, you know, live, you know, for the anatomy, liver, if it's followed by problems, vote no, because basically you've defined a fixing labeling function that tries to fix the tagging, right? 
That tends to be a lower, you can do it, absolutely, and often it can work, but it tends to be a lower yield type of labeling function because you could just go back and fix the tagger, right? That's sort of like where that problem lives. And if you could fix that, um, independent of anything about how an anatomy actually connects to a disorder, um, that's usually the best strategy. Like focus your supervision on that concept, right? How is this, is this anatomical entity linked to this uh, bleeding problem? And when you see errors like this, you just abstain, right? You just don't make a vote. Yeah. I would say no. So the whole advantage here is to move more quickly. So for like spelling errors, that's the type of thing that a tagger can often pick up, especially the, you know, some deep model that has some embedded representation where you can do some similarity type of thing under the hood. Um, so I would, uh, what you want is to do as little work as possible to get your documents into a snorkel type of framework in terms of like pre-processing those types of errors.